He was a French anthropologist and ethnographer. He's best known for his fieldwork among the Guyaki, now better known as the Aceh in Paraguay, and his theory on stateless society. So this guy died in 77. He was a French um, anthropologist. He also took part in the riots and the events in France in May of 68. He spent time in Paraguay with the people there, and this is where he developed his work, his most famous work, which is called Society Against the State. It came out in 1974. He criticizes, and this is where I was going with this. This is awesome to me. This is exactly what I needed to find. He criticizes both the evolutionist notion that the state would be the ultimate destiny of all societies and the Rousseauian notion of man's natural state of innocence, the myth of the noble savage. Knowledge of power is innate in any society, thus the natural state for humans wanting to preserve autonomy is a society structured by a complex set of customs which actively avert, ward off, and refuse the, ride of despot the rise of despotic power. The state is seen as but a specific constellation of hierarchical power, peculiar only to societies who have failed to maintain these mechanisms which prevent separation from happening. Thus, in the Guyaki tribes, the chief has only a representational role, being his people's spokesperson towards other tribes, as in international relations. Internally, the chief only holds a supposed apparent form of power and in fact is constantly rendered powerless by the tribe. If he abuses his role as chief, he may be violently removed by his people and the institution of a spokesperson is never allowed to transform itself into a separate institution of authority. Um, he, his theory thus was an explicit criticism of Marxist theories of economic determinism and what he considered an autonomous sphere of politics which existed in stateless societies as the active conjuration of authority. The essential question which he sought to answer was, why would an egalitarian or foraging society choose to subordinate itself to an external authority? He considered the appearance of the state to be due to the power disparities that arise when religion credits a prophet or other medium with direct knowledge of divine power which is unattainable by the bulk of society. Again, as I said, religious and state institutions come into power. It is this upsetting of the balance and power that endangered, engendered the inequality to be found in more highly stru structured societies and not in initial economic disparity as argued by the Marxist school of thought. And it says that his... His theories have gone on to influence um, some of the schools of thought of anarcho-nihilism. Anarcho-nihilism utilizes this theory in furthering views on willpower and the belief that societies originally regulated power of disparities to prevent the rise of hierarchy and should rationally return to this form of society. As opposed to authority rising from self-interest counter to Marxism, anarcho-nihilism argues that freedom and self-interest of individuals prevents the rise of hierarchy and authority if individuals remain rational and guided by their own self-interest. So that's pretty freaking awesome in my eyes um, because I knew that there were there's examples of tribes and communities that have lived in this way and and I, granted I, I'm like I said I just heard about this this morning so I spent parts of today looking into it and looking up into his work his main work specifically on the uh, the natives there is called Chronicle of the Guyaki Indians it's been translated you can find it online uh, I plan to look into that I think it's very interesting he's also got another book called the archaeology of violence that sounds interesting as well and so I want to expand this further towards India and towards Gandhi and his concept of Swaraj, which means self-rule. It literally means self-governance or self-rule. It was also used synonymous with home rule by Gandhi, but the word usually refers to Gandhi's concept for Indian independence from foreign domination. Swaraj lays stress on governance not by a hierarchical government, but by self-governance through individuals and community building. The focus is on political decentralization, since this is against political and social systems, followed by Britain. Gandhi's concept of Swaraj laid stress on India discarding British political, economic, bureaucratic, legal, military, and educational institutions. So this movement has evolved and turned into others, but it's interesting to me that these concepts continue to flur up flourish and and pop up and in all types of cultures but what are we told from birth as as many of you know we're told that people can't we can't exist this way i mean i've been debating people on facebook today as i'm sure that you guys often do and some people will tell you that primitive societies cannot survive without war but i disagree i think that if you yeah we are animals we are essentially animals we but I believe that we are evolving. We are, are moving past the notion, not only for a state, and along with that 
notion of a state, but the idea that we need to aggress on individuals, that we need to try to conquer them and empower people.